Hey everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Devin Adams. I'm a Fortinet trainer over here in Tempe, Arizona for Dynamic Worldwide. And I'm doing a video series on load balancing our WAN traffic. So uh, in the last videos we showed kind of the, the CLI version to do it without the SD-WAN. Uh, now we're going to eventually get to the SD-WAN part. So um, because guys, honestly, if you have a FortiGate, there's really no reason not to use it. So not only does it give you the benefit of everything that we've looked at so far, uh, you get the GUI with it and you get more intelligent reporting with it if you're going to use it at the most basic level. Now at the most advanced level, uh, essentially you can use it to even migrate away from things like MPLS to manage all of your WAN links itself using more intelligence and rules blah 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 in fact before we go any further what is the SD-WAN solution here and I just want to talk about that for just a moment because there is some confusion because I don't know if that's an official term alright I've heard SD-WAN used in several different contexts okay some SD-WAN providers also has everything tunneling back to like a, a some kind of like hosted uh, exit points you know for your network and it's just it gets very convoluted and very confusing so the SD-WAN solution on the FortiGate all right is essentially throwing links or WAN connections at this logical interface that they call the SD-WAN connection so think of it as like an abstraction layer okay so if we have four or five different internet service providers uh, managing you know what traffic points down what tunnel or what tunnel what path can get very, very, very tricky, okay? And on top of that, all the all the policies that we have to write for redundancy will get out of control. And uh, yeah, so that's what SD-WAN is on the FortiGate. Now, throw in all of the different flavors that they're putting in there to do the routing, and you start getting what's, what's known as this like intelligent SD-WAN. So we can say, hey, you know what? If you see this application, pick the route that has the best, you know, latency or pick the one with the least jitter. It, it's pretty darn amazing. And the fact that it's a part of the FortiGate itself, you don't have to go and purchase an SD-WAN license. Why not use it? All right. So um, and you can throw more connections at it than just that. So you can also do VPN tunnels. You can also do VLANs. You can also do link aggregation links. Um, there's a lot there. But... Before we can really show it off here though, and I'm a big believer on, on doing than just talking, uh, we need to create a GNS3 environment that will give us the ability to utilize the SD-WAN and also for us to play around with it in a safe environment. And this is what I suggest for those people who take my class, is to build yourself an environment like this, get familiar with how it all works before creating a solid plan to implement it uh, using the correct, you know, project management solutions to migrate to it in your environment. So, um, but let's go ahead and for this lab, create an SD-WAN lab in GNS3 before we even try to, to play with it. Okay, so that's going to be our... That's going to be our goal. So uh, right now, here's GNS3, and we have port 1 and port 2 in this WAN connection here. Now, this WAN connection is really just a CentOS box, all right? It's just, it's just a Linux distribution that I'm using as a router, all right? So this interface right here is added to the real Internet, okay? And this is just simulating our, our lab WAN environments. Now, I have videos on how to configure that either using Linux or using PFSense, okay, as a router. And uh, yeah, so, but what I did here was I created, as you can see, 20 interfaces just so I could kind of like future-proof this, this lab environment. So um, this will essentially give us 20 different links to play with, or 19 if you want to be specific. And I thought that was way more than, than enough. Um, but I did that just simply by opening up my, oops, my bad, uh, opening up my WAN configuration here, going to network, and then just adding the 20 adapters. Then once it actually booted up into the, the Linux box, right, I went ahead and I signed IP addresses to each one of those interfaces. And I do have videos on how to do that on my playlist. Um, all I did was add the additional interfaces here. So... I'm going to move this thing down over 
over here somewhere. <laughs> okay, I'm going to kind of stretch this out because we need a little bit more room to play with. All right, and then we are actually going to delete these links here. So let's go ahead and kill them. All right, there we go. And you know what? I actually don't even need these right now either. So now <laughs> the real benefit of the SD-WAN is the ability to create what's known as an SLA, a service level agreement. Now, that once again is just rebranded. We've already done that through the CLI. It's known as the link monitor. So we can set a health check between our interfaces and some outside server to test for latency, jitter, and packet loss. Okay. How do we simulate that in GNS3? Well, there is a device for that, and I believe it's even a Docker. But if we come down here and we find, um, let's see, what is it called? NetTerm, I believe it is. See this NetTerm appliance? This thing is going to act as our, essentially our manipulator for each one of our connections. So we can control the things like the packet loss, the jitter, and the latency. So we can see the rules failing over correctly. Now, I'm a big believer on, you know, giving these icons a little bit more nice of a look so they make sense. So I'm going to right click right here and I'm just going to go ahead and change the symbol to just a basic router. Um, do we have just a basic router? Let's see here. Which hockey puck do I want to use? That's eh, NetFlow. All right. I'm thinking too much up to it. Okay, there we go. We'll just do a, a router here. All right, there we are. And I'm just gonna do this for each one. Now this is just so you know, if you keep the basic symbols, obviously it's not gonna change anything, guys. But for me visually, I think it's, it's worth it. So here we go. Oops, that was the wrong one. Change symbol. This is if I was a YouTuber, I'd like fast forward all of this stuff, but I'm just showing you guys everything here. So here we go. And then I'm going to right click here and I'm almost finished. Router. There it is. Boom. All right. There we go. Now what's neat about these connections is there's only two interfaces and then and then out. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and actually boot each one of these. Okay, bam, and they are going to boot up, and it really doesn't get IP addresses. So, uh, in fact, if I open this up, you'll see it's booting it, okay, and we can manipulate what uh, quality of the traffic comes through these things. So, we can simulate things like, you know, packet loss, jitter, all that jazz. So it'll take a moment to boot up. Now, while I'm doing that, I suggest renaming these to the networks that they're going to be attached to. So for example, this one's going to be 10.200.1.0, which is our port one, right? This one's going to be our 10.200.2.0, which we're using for our backup WAN. Okay. And then here's an additional one, which will be 10.200.3.0. We're just taking advantage of the labels being here. 10.200.4.0. All right. Nice. Okay. So, and then like I said, just kind of move it off to the side here. And eventually we're going to get this. Now check this out, guys. How cool is this? All right. So this is saying bandwidth restrictions, delay, loss. Okay, do you want it symmetric? So on and so forth. Now, there's nothing really connected yet, so we really don't have anything to do. So let's go ahead and do that, all right? But I'm just saying, this little net term configuration is how we're gonna go ahead and put caps on our links here as we test the rules. So here we go. So port one, all right. Going to Ethernet 1, and I already have that Ethernet 1 configured with this IP address. All right, and I do have the other labs showing how to do this on the other playlist. All right, port 2, 
and we haven't configured these on the FortiGate yet, but that's what we're going to do in the next video. This is going to be like if we had different ISP connections going out to our different providers. All right, so here we go. I'll just kind of stack these as well as I can. All right, so these are all going to represent a different internet service provider, a different carrier. All right, and as I mentioned here, we can set the bandwidth, the jitter, the packet lost. We can even do burst, and then we're going to use these here to essentially test our our rules. So, um, which guys, you got to admit that is that is flipping cool. And each one of them, okay, once they see that the connection is up and alive, should just it should just work. All right, so. See, they're still booting up here. All right, but let's actually see if it's still passing traffic on our, our network here. All right, so I'm just going to go here. Now let's go to MSN again. I'm <laughs> like, maybe it is, maybe it's not. Okay. Okay, see, there you go. So putting those devices in between them actually doesn't do anything until we go out of our way to kind of like, you know, say, hey, make sure that this WAN link one is going to experience XYZ bandwidth loss, all right, or, you know, set a bandwidth cap on this link. So guys, using our net term devices here, okay, we can take full advantage of playing around with the SD-WAN rules as we need them, okay? So there you go. That's actually all you need to do to create an SD-WAN lab environment. It's not really till we migrate to the SD-WAN and then also start putting in rules that we're going to start manipulating these net term boxes to simulate things that we might have um, problems with over our real networks, okay? So I'm going to keep this one short because honestly, guys, that is all it takes to build an SD-WAN lab to start testing your rules. We just need the SD-WAN configuration to happen, and that will be in the next set of videos. So, and it will be our, our two remaining ones here after I get done with, with uh, this one. So, all right, guys, um, hopefully that was enough to follow along, and when we get back, we'll migrate to that SD-WAN. So, see you guys next time.